Well, uh, there's been a lot of talk the last couple of weeks about Georgia and, you know, what's wrong with them or, uh, you know, what what's going on between the first two or three games of the season and the last two or three games of the season. And I, I feel like everybody's talked a bunch about that. I made a video about it the other day. And clearly Georgia's not playing as well the last couple of weeks as they were the first few weeks of the season. Um, and it, it, to, to me, though, uh, the, the bigger question is uh, – you know, if Georgia continues to play the way they played the last couple of weeks, when when would they lose, right? In other words, they played really bad against Kent State, but that's Kent State. They won by 17 points. They played really bad against Mizzou on the road, but came out with a win by four. You, you start looking at the games coming up. You got Auburn this week, which we're going to talk about in this video, then Vandy, then a bye week. And then you've got like a four-game stretch that really everybody, when they talked about Georgia, has been talking about that four-game stretch going all the way back to the offseason, which is Florida, uh, home, against, uh, home against Tennessee, on the road at Mississippi State, on the road at Kentucky. Let's, uh, as far as those four games go, yes, Georgia will lose one or more of those games if they play those games the way they played the last couple of weeks. Well, let's focus on the game this week, and that's Auburn. Um, Auburn's not a very good team this year, That's and that's not a surprise. That was sort of the feeling most people had headed into the season. A lot of off-season drama with Brian Harson and rumors and boosters and all that kind of stuff. Uh, you, you guys know the story with that. A bunch of players transferred out, including quarterback Bo Nix, uh, who went to Oregon. You know, Auburn's kind of stuck with T.J. Finley. Uh, and, you know, they bring Robbie Ashford in, who's played, uh, who started the last couple of games. We'll talk about him in a minute. They haven't played well overall. Uh, you know, started out record-wise okay against some lower classification teams, and then they just had the absolute beatdown from Penn State. That's one of the worst home losses for Auburn in over a decade. A close game with Mizzou that they won, a game that could have gone either way. A bunch of mistakes made in that game in the second half, leading up to overtime and in overtime. And then they had the game against LSU this past week where they were actually up 17 to nothing over LSU. And LSU came back, scored 21 unanswered points, won the game 21, uh, 21 to 17. So Auburn's sitting at 3-2, and two, which is about where people thought they would be. People figured they'd beat those lower classification schools. They did. People figured they'd lose to uh, Penn State. Uh, they did. People figured they'd beat Mizzou. They did. Figured they'd lose to LSU. They did. So th they're not a great team, but they're on track with what people's expectations were. And now you have the Georgia game coming up. And this was a game that most people assumed heading into the season that Georgia was going to win. Georgia's a huge favorite in this game. 28 to 30 points, depending on where you look. And I got plenty to say about that in a minute, too. Can Auburn win this game? Um, let's say Auburn continues to play the way they've played the last couple of weeks and Georgia continues to play the way they've played the last couple of weeks. Could Auburn upset Georgia? I don't think so. I think this is another game where even if Georgia has an off day, they can win. I just feel like uh, Auburn, particularly on offense, is going to have a very hard time with Georgia. Georgia's struggles have been offensive. The defense has played well. Uh, you know, they did give up 22 points to Kent State. They did give up 22 points to Mizzou. Generally speaking, in the world of college football, if you give up 22 points, you should win the game. And we're in an age of offense. If you hold an opponent to 22 points, generally you should win. You know, people are looking at Georgia giving up 22 and then looking at last year's Georgia defense and scratching their head. And, well, clearly the defense is not as good as last year. But the defense has played pretty well. Only gave up one touchdown to Mizzou. Um, field position was a problem in that game. Mizzou was getting the ball with great field position after punts and turnovers getting a first down or two, and that already put them in field goal range. So they kicked five field goals in that game. I feel like the defense overall played pretty well, and I feel like that that they've played pretty well overall every week of the season. It's been the offense, right? So defensively, I don't really have any concerns about this game with Auburn. I feel like, you know, if the defense plays at an average level based on what they've played at so far this year, they'll handle Auburn's offense okay. They scored, like I said, 17 um, against LSU last week. They scored... Uh, 14 in regulation against Mizzou, 17 with the overtime. They scored, I think, 16 against Penn State. They've been scoring in that range against Power 5 teams, and that's about what I expect against Georgia. Um, you know, probably somewhere in the 10 to 17 point range. They're going to play Robbie Ashford at quarterback. Now, he was kind of up and down last week. He had a ton of yards. I think he had 330-something yards passing, but he threw the ball 
almost 40 times. He was 19 of 38. So that's just a 50% completion percentage uh, against LSU last week. Two touchdowns and an interception, I believe. I know he had an interception and a touchdown. I think he had two touchdowns. And he ran some, but he's not Jalen Milrow. I think he had 11 carries for like 17 or 18 yards. He is very mobile, though. He reminds me of Bo Nix in that way. You know, Bo Nix is very mobile. Scrambles, runs around, gets out of the pocket, extends plays. But he's never really looking to take off and run. Well, he, well, that's the last resort for Bo Nix and kind of for Robbie Ashford, too. He he extends plays with his feet, keeps his eyes downfield, and throws the ball. And I, ex I expect that to be the case uh, in this game against Georgia. As far as Georgia offensively against Auburn's defense, this is where the concern lies with me. Uh, I've seen Georgia's uh, offensive front get pushed around for the majority of the game, really, against Mizzou. And I do think Auburn's defensive front is better than Mizzou's. There's no doubt in my mind about it. Um, you know, they've held their opponents in the teens, basically, 21 to LSU, with the exception of the Penn State game. Um, and they did that running. Uh, they, they did uh, 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 Penn State ran the ball on Auburn. Now, I mean, they threw it. I think the Penn State was pretty balanced. They had 230, 240 yards passing somewhere in there, but they had 250 yards rushing against Auburn. Well, Georgia hasn't been that great running the ball this year, uh, especially compared to what we're seeing from UGA. They did go over 200 yards uh, against uh, Kent State, right? But against Mizzou, they had around 160 or 170, and that's where they've been the majority of the year. Uh, Oregon, I think they had around 150, South Carolina, uh, maybe a little more than that. Uh, Kent State, uh, a little more than that. Or Sanford, a little more than that. I, I mean, uh, Kent State was a big one. And then last week against uh, Mizzou, other than the fourth quarter, Georgia really didn't have much success running the ball at all. So it looks like what you want to do against Auburn is run the ball. Don't know how well Georgia does that. Uh, it, it, not as well as we're used to seeing. We'll see how they do on Saturday. Um, I hope. Georgia plays like they played the first couple of weeks of the season, obviously. And if that happens, I don't think there's anything Auburn can do to win the game. And then you're going to see somewhere around that point spread of 28 to 30. Georgia will run away with it, right? Um, I just don't know how confident anyone can be about which version of Georgia we're going to see. I mean, the, the reality is they just have not looked the same the last couple of weeks. Are they a terrible team? No. I, nobody with any sense thinks that. And... Um, you know, you can look at almost any team you want. They're going to have a game or two a year where they don't play up to their potential, whether you want to call it a struggle win or whatever you want to call it, right? Um, even national title winning teams don't blow out everybody they play. We kind of have that perception in our head, but it's not actually uh, it's not actually true. You look at Georgia last year, struggle win against Clemson. Of course, the loss to uh, Bama um, the year before that. Uh, Alabama won the national title. Beat Florida by two. Uh, uh, so anyway, you, you can find games like that. The concerning part is that it happened in back-to-back -back games for Georgia, right? And sort of the same types of problems. Stetson Bennett appears a little bit off. The receivers are dropping passes. The offensive line isn't playing as well as we thought it would. It's, it's not like uh, you had one particular problem one week, then fixed it, but there was a different problem the next week. It's kind of been the same set of problems the last couple of weeks for Georgia. So I just don't know how confident we can be that Georgia plays up to its potential. If they do, if they come out and play like they played against Oregon and South Carolina, then you know there's not, there won't be anything Auburn can do. If Auburn plays its best game and Georgia plays its best game, Georgia will win this game by three or four touchdowns. I think we all know that. The worry is, well, what if... They don't. What if Georgia doesn't? You know, what if we see the same Georgia we saw the last couple of weeks? I guess it's possible I'm going to pull off the upset. I just don't see it happening in Sanford Stadium. That's a big difference playing on the road like we did last week at Mizzou versus playing at home. This is Auburn's first road game of the year. And if they start Robbie Ashford again, which is, you know, assuming they are, be his first road start this season. So, you know, it's going to be an adjustment for him. I expect the stadium to be loud. I expect the crowd to really be in the, into the game. It's a 3.30 kickoff. Not as good as a night game, but much better than a noon game. So I do think Georgia's home crowd will be a factor in this game for Robbie Ashford and, and the Auburn Tigers team making their first road trip uh, of the season. Their first five games of the year were home games. So their first trip uh, their first trip on the road. We'll see how Robbie Ashford handles it. But, uh, you know, <laughs> good luck. <laughs> That's all I can tell you. Like I said, I, I don't have any concerns about the defense. So I think Auburn's going to struggle to score points in this game. So unless Georgia turns the ball over, which they've done the last couple of weeks, unless Georgia's offensive line plays bad, which they've done the last couple of weeks, 
Unless Stetson Bennett is a little bit off, which he has been the last couple of weeks. Unless the wide receivers drop balls, which they had the last couple of weeks. I, I think Georgia wins the game easily. Again, if you're looking for a confidence level thing, I, you know, I'm not as confident as I would be normally un- under the same circumstances because Georgia has not looked good. I mean, I, look, I don't know how many times I can say it. Georgia, I mean, you see, Georgia fans are starting to get a little irritated at me for saying this. You have to call it like you see it. I mean, what did all the us Georgia fans run around saying after Alabama barely beat Texas? We laughed at them. Struggle, win, the whole thing. Well, you know, now, now, now it's our turn. Now we have to get laughed at. I certainly hope Georgia gets it turned around this week. And if there's a game to do it, it seems like this is the one. This is a rivalry game. If Georgia can't, can't get up for this game, what game can they get up for? It's a rivalry game. It's at home, a CBS game at 3.30. We've absolutely owned Auburn uh, going back about 20 years, really. They haven't beat us in Sanford Stadium since 2005. And we play them every year. Uh, so every other year is in Sanford Stadium. And they haven't, beat us, they haven't beat us in Athens since 2005. There's something like, there's something like three and seventeen against Georgia overall in the last twenty meetings. So Georgia has really dominated this series for the majority of this century, at least the last twenty years. So there are a lot of built-in advantages and benefits for Georgia in this game. The only real negative or concern that I can find about Georgia in this game is their performance the last two weeks versus what we're used to seeing from Georgia, right? Kirby talks about playing to a standard all the time. It doesn't matter who the opponent is. We didn't play up to that standard. Whatever that standard is, Georgia didn't play up to it against Mizzou uh, or Kent State. I would love to see him get back to that. I'd love to see him get back to that. And uh, I hope that I can relax in the second half of this game and enjoy a comfortable win. I think I kind of got spoiled last year because other than that Clemson game, Georgia ran through the regular season schedule and the game was over at halftime every single week. And, you know, I had literally nothing to worry about in the second half all last year in the regular season after that week one game against Clemson. So far this year, that's not been the case. It looked like it was going to be after what we did to Oregon and South Carolina, but, you know, the Kent State game, now that game was never in doubt. I I never thought we were going to lose that game, but it was a disappointing performance and one that, you know, made me a little upset even into the second half. And then in Mizzou, I thought we were going to lose to Mizzou in the second quarter. I'm pretty sure I said it out loud when I was streaming the game on YouTube. I I, I felt like we were going to... In the second quarter of that game, I, you know, I, I said, Georgia's probably going to lose this game. They came back and won. And if Georgia can get it turned around and get back to the Georgia that we thought we would see heading into the season and the Georgia we did see the first couple of weeks, then at the end of the regular season, you know, no one will even be talking about or remembering what happened on the road at Mizzou in week five. But they need to do it, and this is a good week to do it. Stetson Bennett needs to get back on track. The receivers have got to catch the ball. We've got to get some people healthy, too. Jalen Carter's not going to play. He's our best defensive player. He's not going to play. I don't think we're going to see Jalen Carter until the Florida game. Auburn this week, Vandy next week, then a bye week, then Florida. I don't think we're going to see Jalen Carter again until the, the, the Florida game. Got some wide receivers that are banged up. Aaron Smith played a little bit last week. We'll see if he can get some more touches this week. Will A.D. Mitchell finally play this week? You know how Kirby is. Every week he's closer and closer, uh, you know, and then two years later you look around and the guy ain't played yet, but I don't know. So we'll see about uh, A.D. Mitchell. Eric Gilbert, you know, milk carton award for the second year in a row. Um, You know, still got Brock Bowers, and we need to find something. (laughs) The running game's got to do better. It's just got to do better. You know, you can cherry pick a stat here and there that makes it look like we're running the ball okay, all three of our – Primary running backs, I believe, averaged four and a half yards per carry or more against Mizzou. That sounds great until you realize that really all of that was in the fourth quarter. We couldn't run the ball in the first three quarters of that game. Fourth quarter, Missouri gave out. They can't rotate players in and out. And they just, they gave out. And Georgia was able to run it down their throat in the fourth quarter to seal the game. And that's where most of those rushing stats came from. Be nice to see Georgia be able to run the ball in the first half of the game, especially considering uh, Penn State just lined up and ran it down their throat for four quarters. Uh, that Nick Singleton, that's the game of his career so far. I mean, he's a true freshman, but the guy just went ham in that game. Just went absolutely nuts. Auburn out running their mouth this week. Man, I don't understand that. I'm sure everybody's seen it by now. There was an interview or something an Auburn player was doing or a press conference or something. He said, we're going to go out there and annihilate uh, Georgia's defensive line, whatever he said. I don't know if that was a good idea, boss man. I don't know. I don't know if that was a good idea. Georgia, you know, already probably pissed off, already probably getting yelled at all week by the coaches for playing bad for two weeks in a row, and then an Auburn player comes out and gives Georgia prime locker room or 
yeah, lo uh, locker room material or whatever you call it, bulletin board material. I don't know if that was a good idea. I don't know if that was a good idea. Uh, so I'm going to take Georgia to win. I can't bet Georgia right now at, at 28, 30 point favorite. I, I need to see Georgia play good more consistently like I did the first two or three weeks of the season before I could ever lay 28 or 30 points in a game with Georgia. Is, is Georgia capable of winning by that amount? Of course they are. If they play like they did against Oregon or South Carolina, they will win this game. They'll cover to 28. If they play like they played against Kent State Mizzou, they'll win by 7 to 10 points or, or something. You know. A Jekyll and Hyde team right now at this UGA. Uh, so we'll see. We'll see. But it is a, you know, it's, it's a game worth getting excited for if you're a Georgia or an Auburn fan. You know, Auburn coming in trying to knock off the number one team. And, well, not the number one team, but the, the defending national champion, undefeated defending national champion in their own place. I'm sure we'll get Auburn's best shot. And if you're Georgia, rivalry game at home, national audience, CBS, big-time game, coming off a couple of underwhelming performances. It seems like this would be the time uh, for Georgia to put it together and give us another really good game. We'll see. We'll see. We'll see. But Auburn's losing. 